I'm Sarek, aka Unique. I've been in the scene since the early 80s, and I'm your MC for this documentary. And what are we talking about? We're talking about Sydney hip hop culture. It's not the stereotype you think it is, of kids wearing baseball caps backwards. It's a real culture. We live it and breathe it every day. The basic equipment for hip hop is four elements. MC, DJ, graffiti writing, and break dancing. The MC is basic equipment. What we always do is, is grab the microphone, and talk, talk facts, especially in Sydney hip hop, you know, that's important. So we keep it real. The break dancer is basic equipment. Skills, stunts, tricks, falls, bruises, you know, you name it. Break's got a lot. Yeah, it's everything, isn't it? It's like you're doing stuff that people would never imagine could be done. The DJ is basic equipment. I'm not a musician. I'm a beat magician. Casting spells on 12s is my mission. The graffiti writer is basic equipment. I'm gonna be painting when I'm fucking 60, 70 till I die, I don't give a fuck. But first up, the MC. You might know him as the rapper, the master of ceremony. He's the one with the power of the spoken word. The MC is the journalist, the poet rhymer and storyteller, proclaimer of the vendetta. And nothing sounds finer than a sharp freestyler. MCs know when a rocket and reveal like a prophet. MCs, we use our voice as the medium. The people, we start feeding them with information to be free again. <laughs> yeah, we're leading them to see again. Correct MCs, elevate mind states just like helium. Life of the party gives us sustenance, sustain like Kellogg's. And that's why I'll be busting this. Slickism represents the real fake MCs. I killed the skillless. I live all us when I do this. Well, my name's Slick the Elite, and I hail from Eastwood in Sydney. You could probably call that the inner western suburbs. Um, and my original background is Lebanese. Slick the Elite, because I'm sleek, <laughs> slicker than sleek, and I'm the elite. Grabbing a microphone till you can't compete. For the blacks in America, you know, it was a music for the minority. It was an expression of people that were in misery, humiliated, being prejudiced. I could relate to the same sort of oppression, like being called a wog in school, you know, being the minority, being the underdog, having to come up all the time, having to fight, just on a smaller level, fighting for your rights, you know, every day. The MC is the journalist, the poet rhymer. Well, I've done a little short rap about MCing. Uh, the MC is the poet rhymer, storyteller. So we use our voice as the medium. So when I rap, I talk about being a wog, having wog parents, growing up, the shit we go through in Sydney, the coppers, the government, the racism, the fun, the good, the bad, the partying, everything. For me, that's keeping it real. That's a representation of what I am and what I stand for. I don't know, I think the hip hop heads in Sydney, they, they mightn't be black, but they're rap naturals, you know? Step back, step back, step back, step back, cause I'm gonna wear my tack. Step back, step back, step back, step back, cause I'm gonna wear my tack. Yo, suckers, it's a funnel with my tack. Hey, suckers, it's a funnel with my tack. Yo, dickhead, it's a funnel with my tack. Yo, suckers, it's a funnel with my tack. My name is Paul Skibrus, also known as Case and also known as, known as Funnel Web as an MC. So what we're talking about in Funnel Web Productions, which really means fuck well power, is um, all about the bullshit that everybody knows but is scared to talk about. So we're doing the talking for them. Stop! Ah! Let's take a look around. Uh! Cannot escape, no exits are found. Uh! This is a place down here where we express ourselves through um, graph, um, a place where we can relax, you know what I mean, and not have any worries about seeing, being seen by the police and that. And we're just trying to make it look a bit better, you know what I mean, than just to like um, a load of crap they look like before. Now a lot of junkies just come down here before and shoot up and that. And we're trying to get rid of all that uh, crap, you know what I mean? Coming out of my grave, I wasn't born to a I wasn't born a slave, but I was born to save mankind. Cause I take the through on you talk, of course. I've got the soul, I've got the soul force. I've tried alcohol, I've tried smoking marijuana to get a high off life. But um now I don't even need that shit because I just got I just got the hip hop and that's my drug, you know. I don't need that kind of shit. I've got good friends and shit like that. Young kids that used to steal cars and take drugs and stuff, I get them into rhyming, I get them into scratching, into um, you know, writing, break dancing. Break dancing. 
you know, graph, the whole works, you know what I mean? They're feeling good about themselves most of all because that, that good shit comes out of it. About six months ago, like, I was knocking off cars, you know, 20 cars a week. But now, you know, like, I've got another family because I've never had a family. My parents left me when I was one. And, you know, since I've met Paul, Case, it's changed my life, you know. I haven't knocked off cars, haven't done this, haven't done that, you know. It's just fully changed my life and just hip-hop rules, mate. <laughs> You asked us how like how we use hip hop to fight the system. Well, being original fights the system itself because you haven't been trimmed down as a character. I'm a little closer. Let me tell you something. I put it in a riddle while these beats are bumping. I'm talking low so no one else can hear. Cause we got a plan that's underground. They might fear people like us who they call rebels and rejects. But really we got freedom of rights and to protect and they give you freedom of speech so they know you're in a force. I don't teach people how to rap. I bring out what they already have and I'll sit there talking to them for about an hour about their life or what goes on, whatever, and I'll say, that's it. That's what you got to talk about in your rapping. I'm 20 now, probably from about the age of 12 to about 19 or so, that I've spent a lot of time in psychiatric wards and sort of asylums and things because I couldn't go with the system, but I, I didn't understand why, and, and I was told that I was crazy and stuff, and people hear my rhymes and stuff and they think that's, that's, that's crazy shit, but that, then they got to listen deeper to hear the message. Lowering myself down to the mic by a single thread of web, a body with a fucking answer. Somebody grabbed it on, now I was born warm. The perfect example of a deadly new high, but a revolution in God. I, I probably for about a year I just spent in bed, just depression, just a whole year in, in pretty much in bed. And now I'm do every day I, I get out and I live, I live, I love living life and and I, and I just uh, that's thanks to Case and that you know and the Funnel Web crew. Step back, step back, step back, step back, get some Funnel Web attack. Step back, step back, step back, step back, get some Funnel Web attack. I like to say a message out to all you hip hoppers out there. It's, this is the only thing we've got on the street that's fucking really ours and we can't let it be systemised like everything else because once they get a grip of it, they'll bring it into schools and then like, you know, they're bullshit, you've got to pay for this, pay for that. This is the only thing that we've got left that is completely pure, ours. Pure self expression So let's keep it real, eh? FWB Army! FWB Army! The system called it breakdancing. Molly Meldrum labelled it rap dancing. We call it b-boying or b-girling. In hip hop, it gets big respect. It's probably one of the most hardest forms of dancing in the world. B-boy, aka breaker, get it valleys, ready for battle replays, street fighting with skills in real tight, for work and freezes, kung fu battle type of stances, breaking the Lord of War dances, one of the four elements that make up the hip hop culture. So how could it ever just be a fad, you jack? B-boy, spin like a tornado, then freeze like a sculpture. Yes, yes, or gather round, pull open circle, watch us enter the center and go buckle with atomic drops, rocks, turtle hops, and you don't stop, pops to the real to keep it straight. Yeah, what up, Def Wish from Kilowatts, aka Convoy 31, Sydney, Melbourne, hip hop connection. It's 15 years now, still at it, still breaking, painting, and rapping. Just living the B boy life, straight up. One of the four elements that make up the hip hop culture. Being a breaker myself, um, just wanted to uh, remind people what breaking is about. It's, it's, it's a very strong battle type dance but at the same time, it is fun, you know what I mean? When I first started doing it uh, in sixth grade, not, not a lot of people knew what hip hop was. Uh, when I went into a school talent quest type thing in sixth grade, I come out breaking and rapping, and like probably only a couple of people in the whole school had, had seen this type of thing before, so the whole place freaked out. In 84, it was large. A couple of years later, a lot of people stopped doing it, and a lot of people called it a fad. I didn't stop doing it because I knew that breaking is one of the four elements of the hip hop culture. You're going to stop breaking, call breaking a fad, you're calling the whole hip hop culture a fad. So why can it ever just be a fad, you jack? Yeah, of course it started in America, but why can't it go worldwide? Why can't we have people in every country representing it? The thing that is unique about the Australian hip hop culture, especially in the rapping, is things like we can rap with an Australian accent and express that Australian accent and which straight away makes you original from any other rapper in the world. Keep it street. Keep it street style, man. You know what I mean? People love that shit. Get technical with it, you know what I mean? Get the footwork happening. 
Um, try and be original, try and even get your own moves. Keep your breaking directed at the street audience. Don't sell that shit out, man. Don't, don't start adding other shit into it, you know, like cross, crossing it over with other types of dances. I'm happy keeping it street, man. I don't want to make money from that, you know? If I want to make money from dance, I go to jazz ballet or something. <laughs> Okay, I'm C's and uh, exit. Well, the DJ used to play a break, which was like a sample. The play a break, uh, different, uh, maybe a, a tune from somewhere or a breakdown and beat, a particular break of a, of a track would be a segment of the track that would be known as a break. And when the DJ would play that break, then the, the guys would break. <laughs> When I saw it, I was just fell in love with it. And I mean, I've always been active, so with my, my brother here, it had that sort of uh, raw, rough sort of credibility to it. It wasn't something that was tacky and commercialised. Today, in the 90s, it's come back and it's, it's, it's gained its respect again. It's, it's, people are seeing that it's been around and it still is around and it just wasn't a fad. You're doing stuff that people would never imagine could be done. In our time, we've just mostly concentrated on the, um, the power moves. The power moves. Breaking has all raw elements and there's nothing really that can be bought and sold. You know, no kid can become, you know, break boy or whatever because there's nothing he can more or less buy. Mm. You know, it's all raw elements. You don't need anything. All you need is a bit of cardboard and yourself, your tracksuit or whatever, and throw yourself on the ground. So it wasn't it was snowboarding, skateboarding, you need the wheels and the skateboards and the, the decks and the, you know, you can look this image by buying these things. And with breaking, it's all raw materials. <laughs> Hip-hop's come a long way since the early 80s. Back then, there's a lot of conflicts with police, skins, punks, riders hanging on the streets, train stations. Today, it's more organised. And when we get together, it's usually at our own jams. Well, if it wasn't for the DJ, hip-hop probably would not have emerged. Playing records for the people, providing solace away from the world. Moving the record back and forth, the scratch is born. Pitch the control, manipulating sound. Positive eight to speed it up and negative eight. Slows it down, who wears the crown? Too many cut masters. Creating, innovating with body tricks. Turntablism, elevating the art form. Maestro's orchestrating, swelling up a storm. One playing the beat, one playing the horn. One with the bass line, ripping it up till it's torn. Okay, my name's MC Trey. Um, stands for the rhyming, edifying youngin, and that's what I plan to do through um, hip hop. Being a female, I think it could be a lot. Um, I could use it to my advantage, you know, um, in more physical terms. But I choose not to because I think you just play yourself out, and I'd prefer to use the mental to elevate myself because there's too many, you know, women doing that. What attracts me to hip hop culture is. The fact that it is actually a culture and it's got four elements that you can express yourself through. I'm from um, the islands, Fiji, and I can, you know, relate the turntable to, you know, a lali, which is like a traditional Fijian drum. Or, you know, the aerosol art to like cave paintings. The emceeing to like, you know, great my great grandfather speaking around the kava bowl, emceeing, or, you know, talking and the break dancing, you know, similar to traditional dances, indigenous dances. There's a lot of different multicultural backgrounds within hip hop. You go to other jams and you only see like a particular race or whatever, but you come to a hip hop jam and you can guarantee that there's like every nationality, all these kids come from different countries or their parents have, and they come together and they're able to like exchange, find out more about each other. If Pauline Hansen would come down and see what was happening here, I think she'd be changing his speeches. We'd probably even get it a rap. Well, if it wasn't for the DJ, hip hop probably would not have emerged. Um, the rhyme that I did was about DJing and it was actually just showing people that weren't necessarily exposed to the art form of DJing or turntablism as we now know it. Turntablism is the art of actually making music with the turntable.
we're the Crossfader Raiders, I'm DJ ASK and this is DJ Bones and we're coming straight out of Conquer West. <laughs> what we're about is uh, actually taking a DJ which is a disc jockey, which type you'll find in a club, but swing it around and do tricks and make it more of a visual type of thing than just someone to come and listen to. Okay, the basis of a uh, hip-hop DJ is basically using two of the same records and breaking it down. So we're going to use two of the same records and break it down. Break it down. We use records like um, Benny Hill record or a, a, a kid's record and then put some old soul beats under it. It's just like experimentation. The bits that work we keep and the bits that don't we just throw away. What attracted me was first uh, I went to a party and no one turned up except for the DJ. So me and my friend, we um, just ended up DJing and got the bug. This DJ got a monster dog. People say DJs are freak out on the, on the techniques, on the MCing, the breakdancing, all it's that still, stuff. It's still new to a lot of people out there. That's why still a lot of people haven't been introduced to it. But they've seen it on, say, movies or on TV. And it's basically, I think these days, it's the, the clothes and, and the, the style. Everyone wants the style and, and the attitude. But if you're going to wear the stuff and listen to the stuff, why don't you come and support the real stuff? Yeah. We've been doing it for over 10 years now. It's got its own identity, its own flavour, its own Australian flavour of hip-hop. It comes down to more than music. It's a, a lifestyle, it's a way of living. Music's just one part of it. What is it? See, in hip-hop, the vinyl's very important. You can't manually spin a CD. Without the vinyl, the DJ's dead. Years ago, the vinyl was very hard to find. You could only buy your hip-hop records only from a couple of stores. So nowadays it's spread all throughout the city. Up these stairs is Next Level Records, a bit more than a normal record store, a place where Sydney hip-hop comes to meet. You're at the Next Level, uh, Next Level Records in Sydney, and I'm Dr. Fibes, I run the Next Level. Next level is uh, unique in as much as you're able to break dance here on the weekends. Uh, we have the freestyle sessions for young MCs who are learning their skills of trade, learning how to be an MC. Even show your DJ skills behind the decks at the freestyle sessions. If you, if you haven't been here before, we sell graffiti magazines, we sell vinyl, we sell CDs, tapes and magazines that explain and give you an understanding of hip-hop culture. Well, from responses that I've had from my customers from all around the world, I believe that there isn't actually a shop anywhere in the world where you actually can break dance and where there's regular freestyle sessions in store. There's no pressure for anyone to buy anything. Just come and vibe and check it out, you know, and support local acts as well as what's happening overseas. I'm Mystery and I'm a graffiti writer, but also I rap with a group called Brethren. And this is Wisdom, the other MC in Brethren, there's two of us. Reaching like waves on a beach with my speech, plus I land upon my feet as if I was born for each. We're trying to speak about what we know, which is, you know, our suburbs, where we live, and we're both from different different nationalities, so we try and portray that as, as another element of Sydney that we've got, which is the multicultural aspect. Also, both of us are, are Christians as well, so we always have elements of, like, spirituality and stuff like that in our rhymes as well. Well, my, my MC style is more like uh, storytelling and also, uh, like, constructed, like, rhythmic patterns. Whereas mystery is more like um, abrupt and unpredictable. Hip hop is untamed expression, an MC confession, the DJ obsession. I went overseas through Europe and America and Africa and stuff like that, and it's good to see that in each different country, although we started off with the American roots, we've all got our own styles now, and there's a developing underground, and the underground is real unified. Like it's like an international mafia, I reckon. Dating back to the days of Belshazzar, son of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, archaeologically uncovered in the city of Pompeii, graffiti displayed relevance to the spray paint culture of hip hop today.
they ever saw artistry in his own genre. From the system and getting up, we hit them at all city aliens, the craziest non-profit organization, destination creation, masterpieces we release, letter forms we tame and manipulate, code the message with a wild style, camouflage and distort the color scheme, painting walls or trains, mark the stain with an anonymous fame, just from writing my name, I spray there for I am autographing artistic contraband. Now the rhyme that I did for the for this documentary was about the history of graffiti and aerosol art and um, as a letter form tracing it back to the book of Daniel in the Bible where it's in Daniel chapter 5 where it talks about God writing on the temple wall of Babylon. Archaeologically uncovered in the city of Pompeii. It goes into Pompeii where, the, where um, archaeologists found the word um, words written on the edifices and they and they got the word graffiti from that, which is graffito or graffiere in Italian, I think, or Latin. Aerosol artistry in its own genre. Graffiti art or aerosol art, as you probably know from seeing the, the rest of this thing, is, is one of the elements of hip-hop. It's the visual art form. It's like the equivalent of the fine arts with painting and drawing and stuff like that. It's really about the letter form and um, the manipulation of, of the letter form. Government and big businesses have a lot of money for their advertising. And when writers are bombing the system with their art, basically they're putting up their own billboards. You may know it as graffiti. I know it as writing my name. All my thoughts and emotions, I let it out through my pieces on the wall. I feel confident if my name is everywhere I go. Like, it's my area. Do you understand what I mean? It, it, I feel at home. I, f I feel comfortable in my surroundings. And, if I'm in an area where my name isn't there, I, I feel as though I'm in a foreign place and I'm out of place. Like if I'm in another suburb where I've got nothing there, I'll, I'll feel weird and I'll feel like I'll have to conquer the area before I feel comfortable. When things go bad, it's the thing that I can always turn to that I enjoy and that makes me calm, you know? It, it's just something that, that's in my soul that every time I sit there and draw or I paint, I it's hard to explain, it's like almost a drug in, in a sense. Most people when you talk about graffiti, like straight older people, they think there's just tags, you know, on walls or people writing, Joe was here in 96. There's more than that to it. Well, a tag is more or less just your name that you go by, like a nickname. A uh, piece is a painting, more or less like from the term masterpiece. A throw up is just a quick name, more or less like a large version of a tag to get your name up quicker so it's seen by more people. A panel is a piece done on a train, a small piece. What is it? I think there should be another word for graffiti because most it doesn't really express what it is to some people. You're more or less changing the alphabet. You, you're creating more or less like a sign writer or a calligraphy writer. You develop, you're changing the, the letters and, and manipulating them to the way you want. Like more or less, that's what makes every person's style unique to them because it's like a fingerprint. Everyone's style is different to the next person. You know, in the old days, it seemed to be more of a working class art form. But now, you've got the legal aspect of it. Well, then all the yuppies and the middle class kids and that are gonna come because they think it's cool, you know? They're gonna come into it because they don't have to do anything illegal. So they don't have to risk, you know, getting in trouble for mummy and daddy. Like in the old days, we never had the choice of doing legal pieces. It was either do illegal pieces or do nothing. I can't honestly see myself stopping because it's the only thing that keeps me sane. And it's like I said, it's more like a hobby to me. I don't consider it like a crime or I'm doing anything against a community that's bad. Or to me, like I go out and do legal pieces of my own free will, of my own paint, and I beautify the area. Like to me, I'm doing a community a favor, if anything. The police want to lock you up for that. Getting busted for graffiti? You can receive heavy fines, even go to prison. Me, myself, I went down pretty hard. 
For the newer generation, there's more cops and more laws. So to be a graffiti writer, you must be dedicated. Mainstream society can get fucked. I use graffiti. It's, it's a form of escape for me. It's a form of self-expression. You see a train sitting still for more than two seconds, you're on it, you know? Fuck, if you got some implement, a pen, a fucking a rock you can scratch in your fucking window, you're up, mate. You want to leave your name there. Fucking someone's going to see it. You do one tag, one person sees it, it's done its job. Everyone knows the go. I love it, mate. You know, I've, I'm there to rush, you get smashed off paint, you look up and fucking lay up, there's boys, you know, it looks like a discotheque with all smoke fucking flaming everywhere. Boys are just running, running around everywhere, grabbing paint, fucking, it's sick, mate. You know, I've had some fuckwit tell me in the yard, you know, I've got ya. Man, he's still getting compensation payouts from fucking SRA dickheads, man. No one can stop graffiti, man. It's in your face forever. I can do graffiti in the book, I can do graffiti anywhere. I can fucking sit there on a fucking toilet wall, I can drop tags, or I can go out and fucking paint a train. I can do a rooftop, I can go drains, I can go walls, legal walls. I can do anything, mate. Do run-ups on buses and trucks and trains, planes, mate. I don't care. I've had fuckwits come up to me and go, I like this stuff, but I don't like the scribble. Mate, if you're going to like this, you've got to look at fucking tagging and take everything, because it's all part of one thing, mate. You can't take one element of it and say, yeah, I like this bit, not that, you know? Get the fuck out of here! People may not be able to read what that says, man, but they can fucking make their own opinion about it. You know, fair enough, they don't like it. They can fuck off and go home, mate. I don't give a fuck. Fifteen years non-stop hip-hop, and you thought it was just a fad.